So one of my overall goals is to have a, a fairly strong um, thematic narrative. All right, that that's what I'm thinking in my mind, where I have um, the spider riders right in the Arachnorok. They're tucked up. Uh, maybe even a little under the tree, right? This is still, you know, a flexible layout, but that's the thinking. And then I can put webbing and, and, and spiderlings and stuff climbing on the tree and tie those in. Um, keeping the spider riders here with this arachnorock and then taking the cave and making it look spidery kind of ties those in as well. And um, making the idol, all right, um, the sort of focal point, now that I've pulled it forward, that really helps emphasize it that the, all the lines are sort of leading to it with a little altar and then have the shamans oriented around it. It's sort of like, okay, we erected a quick idol. We're going to talk about that in a second. And we, ha we have a little worship area now. And... Um, still having a hut over here and the thinking being that this is very temporary uh this is not something that you know they've built up they sort of maybe capitalized on the cave and you know uh erected a quick uh shrine but um i you know i want it to feel like it's a temporary camp rather than sort of a a formal we've been living here for a year arrangement but here are the questions that have arisen for me and the first one is the actual size of this. This is 43 inches across and 23 inches deep. Now that's fairly large to put down on a uh, table at a gaming event. And it's large to put on your uh, shelf if you have a shelf that you wanna uh, display this on. So that creates a challenge in terms of including all of this stuff. And just to show you, this is an overlay that would show a 36 uh, let's do it like this all right so this shows you a 36 by 20 display board and you can see how there's quite a bit of challenge to to fit all of these different things into that so the ultimate size is going to dictate to some degree what elements can be included um, and which what might need to be omitted. I'll talk more about that in just a second. The um, second question um, uh, that came to me is that, you know, these units are not necessarily fixed in time, okay? The uh, game, um, Fan Warhammer Fantasy is gone. Um, the client has indicated he's not interested in Age of Sigmar. Um, and that sort of makes me think along the lines of Kings of War. Now, Kings of War has fixed base dimensions for units. There's troops and hordes. And so that locks in certain things. But if you wanted to change your spider riders to a horde, right, they'd go double deep. And that changes this kind of, of arrangement. These are not going to have cutouts to receive the miniatures bases. So there's some fluidity in how you arrange them. But this is my visual layout that balances all of the terrain elements, which is what I'm considering in this design. So if there's going to need to be flexibility in the, the footprint of the Savage Orcs, um, you know, that is going to affect how much swamp there is, how close they are to the idol. And that all ties in right to that, that what is the ultimate size going to be? So I'm going to need the client to really guide me in some of those concepts um, to, you know, allow me to do whatever rearranging I need to do um, to be flexible for gaming into the future. The other thing that's a challenge is the idol. And this actually is a good point to mention what my other issues are in terms of this. Um, I have a lot going on here. I have some really big time consumption kinds of items. Um, this tree, by hand creating it, that's going to take quite a bit of time. The idol, if I was going to say hand carve it, that's going to take a lot of time. The swamps and the water certainly is going to be um, a time-consuming venture. One of the thoughts I had with the cave was having an open path going leading into the back. So I don't want you to look into the cave and see the back of the board. I want it to feel like the cave is going down and, and backwards into some dark uh, area that you can't see. Um, but one fun option would be to angle it differently and then create a viewing port maybe to look into the cave. Again, that's another big time item. 
So I've been trying to think about possible compromises to um, fit in the amount of work needed uh, <laughs> to fit in the amount of work I want to do with um, the time and the budget constraints that are on the project currently. One of the ideas I have is to um, purchase a uh, idol um, that is uh, something I can use as a foundation for this rather than doing um, a straight hand carving all the way through. And I'm going to um, go to the computer and show you my ideas for that. All right, I've uh, shot this a couple times actually because I keep hitting, forgetting to hit record or using the wrong mic, whatever. So I'm going to try and be brief. Um, but originally, when I was thinking about an idol for a temporary encampment, I was thinking about something made of wood. Um, and of course, this isn't an orc idol, but it was something that kind of gave me an idea of what could be done in wood. Actually, these legs are kind of interesting. Hmm. All right, I'm going to think about that for a second. Let's look at a few of the other ones I came across. Um, here's an interesting concept where they've sort of strapped together, uh, if you know, if you will, uh, boards to create the structure. And um, these are kind of goofy tree men spirits, but uh, you know, I kept them in the the reference folder here just just because it gives me another thing to. Uh, ponder you know this is kind of interesting here with this twisting wood i don't know um it was i never noticed the vulture before anyway i digress uh it's something to con you know to consider and here's a tree man from uh, gw and their older one and uh i like how the foliage is integrated into it and it gave me also another concept about you know wood and and thickness and uh you know ideas along that line and then I came across this. This is um, an old Forge World model. Well, old. It's out of production. Uh, it's the uh, Rogue Idol, and um, it was produced as a, a monster, actually, and um, and had rules for it. But it gave me something to consider for making a idol, or or in fact, maybe just using this outright. I didn't really want it to be stone, uh, but it. You know, it's it's big, and carving something this large, you know, out of foam is going to be, you know, pretty arduous. Um, I'd have to probably go another route, and then I thought about maybe taking it and just modifying it. And I thought this was an interesting, uh, uh, you know, way uh, concept of sort of tying in something a little more organic. But of course, if they erect something, that they're not going to, you know, it's not going to have a tree growing out of it right from the get go. So I don't know, maybe it's a moving idol and it's been following them to the encampment. That would be an interesting way to conceive of it. Um, but certainly the idol looks a lot better with this mask on it. I really don't like the head, uh, but um, I like the overall concept of being able to work with it to add, you know, vegetation and make it look um, a little bit more, you know, have a little bit more character and a little bit more of an organic feel. And uh, then I looked at this photo and I thought, mm, maybe it's too big. <laughs> I'm going to assume uh, that, you know, I, I'm assuming there's a perspective problem here. Maybe there isn't. And that uh, this isn't quite as tall as it appears. Um, certainly didn't look that big against the uh, goblin, but it's got to be maybe 10 inches tall. And maybe that's too much. And maybe modifying it, you know, and taking off arms and putting on wood and, you know, making some kind of stone wood hybrid would take me more time than just building one outright. So I don't know. And throwing these ideas out there, uh, maybe sort of some feedback from the client, but also from my viewers. You guys give lots of great feedback. And so I'm just going to throw some spaghetti at the wall and uh, see what sticks. Other things that could be um, changed, compromised to um, fit it within the, the constraints is to um, omit really doing um, a, a detailed interior of the cave and certainly, you know, dropping a potential viewing port there. Um, dropping maybe one or both of the huts and certainly simplifying them in their design. I had visions of, you know, lots of, of uh, you know, weapons and, and whatnot stored around them and giving them a real like, you know, everybody's dropped all their stuff to go inside and rest and you know here's a little fire ring to give it a real camp feel and of course shrinking the overall dimensions um which reduces of course the total time and will automatically crop out some of the elements that are in 
the board. But for me, the the sort of things that I would really like to keep, and again, you know, I'm, the the client uh, can can orchestrate what he feels is most important. But to me, I really want this tree. Um, I think it's going to add a lot of nice visual uh, framing and and height towards the back of the board. Um, I really like the idea of the idol being the focus point, you know, for all of the attention of the board. And I really want to do the viewing of the swamp, uh, you know, from the, the sides of the display board. Um, so those are the things I really want to keep. And everything else is sort of a much more fluid, you know, um, ideas on uh, the development. And I also had <laughs> ideas. I also thought about adding some lighting, uh, which I would like to do. Um, certainly some lighting involving the idol, um, potentially some lighting involving the water, and in a tertiary manner, potentially some lighting involving the cave. So that's a, a lot of stuff to do and some of it's going to have to get dropped um, as, as things are currently planned uh, and the lighting is potentially one of those things that might need to be omitted. Um, just before I forget, the um, client mentioned that he'd like a turn counter integrated into the board and I would like to have the turn counter be maybe the pedestal that the idol sits on and then you can rotate the pedestal to reveal what turn it is. The idol will not turn, just the pedestal uh, below it and I thought that might be a nice way to seamlessly integrate it into the display board so so that gives you an overview of my thinking all of the questions that I have about it and some of the ways it could be modified um, to address some of the concerns that I have so having taken a look at those uh, the menagerie of ideas and plans uh, I just want to say um, how refreshing to have a, a new project that's fun, uh, that's challenging, that gives me a chance to investigate all these different kinds of techniques and ideas and things I haven't done before. And I'm going to be keeping in the forefront of my mind to try to maintain you know, some efficiency in how I tackle some of these uh, projects, aspects, and also um, to think about how I can fit within the 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 budget that I bid in terms of the time I invest. So challenges for me, but lessons learned from the Ocean Board project. So uh, we'll see what I can do with that. And um, of course, I'll be giving you some reflections on that as I uh, work through this project and uh, take you along with me. Um, just before I go, I wanted to mention the two shout outs. Um, one is for uh, Krieg Craft Matt's Creecraft is another uh, YouTube channel. You should check them out. Lots of good stuff there. They don't post as frequently as I'd like to see, but it sounds like they've been working on this Kickstarter pretty heavily. Uh, it is for gaming mats, and I have to say when I looked at them that they are maybe the best I've seen, uh, and I think it's worthy taking a look at them, uh, especially if, if that's something that you've been wondering if you could use on, for your own gaming. I'll put a link to that Kickstarter in the description down below. And another Kickstarter that was just um, presented to me is for a miniature wargaming documentary. And this project is aimed at doing a fairly comprehensive uh, coverage of the, um, you know, the leaders in the industry, Rick Priestley and the, the Perry brothers, and also um, doing, um, you know, interviews and, and ex sort of exclusive content with a lot of the leading manufacturers in the industry. I did not see GW on that list. Shocker. But um, it's uh, an interesting project. And I think, I ha you know, one of the things that they were targeting is the fact that nobody else has really done this kind of a documentary. So looks interesting, definitely worth checking out. I'll put the link to that Kickstarter as well in the description down below. And hopefully um, you're interested in seeing how this project is going to progress and that you'll come back to see that progression because you know that I will be back soon with another Terrencecapes video. Just before we go over and take a look at the plans, was to give you a little summary of a summary. Okay, you know what? Let's start this all over again. Blah 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 blah.
blah, blah. Hmm. Challenges to look at. I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. We'll start that again.